Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to, on behalf of the family, thank everyone first and foremost uh, for all your love, all your prayers, all your messages. Um, like I've been telling quite a few people, I'm usually on the other side of this, and I'm hearing these words uh, from someone else and not really understanding that they really do. Um, People say they feel prayers, you really do. And it really is appreciated, all the, all the, um, all the thoughts, all the prayers, all the, all the help. This church, this church community is amazing. Um, just quick, I, last night my wife and I swung in here because I didn't, um, didn't know for sure if the boys could handle it and get it all set up. And it was all done when I got here. I, don't, I was only a half hour late. So anyway, thank you guys. You're amazing. Um, I need those flowers. I gotta talk to my mom and dad. I need the flowers out of the way so I can talk to my mom and dad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I didn't uh, think I'd ever. That's fine. I can talk. I'm just, yeah, I was just, but yeah, no, I want to, um, yeah, that's good. Um, I know there's probably isn't a single person here that if given the opportunity wouldn't um, turn back time a little bit to, to alter um, a certain situation. And I know if mom and dad, if you had the chance, that's what you would you would, given the opportunity, you'd go back and um, at least call him and tell him to drive slow or, or even go confiscate his bike from him or something. But we can't, we can't do that. Um, I know 
There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people ask, um, you know, what can we do for you? Is there anything we can do for you? The one, the one thing that you guys want the most, we can't, we can't do that. We can't give Logan back. We can't turn back time. Um, but we know we can't give you what you need the most right now, but um, we know who can. And, and he is doing it and he will do it. And that's his promise that he will. Um, we can't make it all better, uh, but God's promise is that that's, he's working on it and the day is coming when it will be all better. Um, Genesis, Genesis uh, in the book of Genesis and throughout the creation, the creation story, um, I don't want to get into the whole thing, but on the sixth, sixth day, God looks over all of his creation and he's after he had created mankind and he said, it is good. It is very good. And it says and it was the morning and the evening of the sixth day and God rested on the seventh day. And then through sin, there came a curse into the garden, into God's perfect creation through sin. Death entered into the world and God had to cast man out of the garden and he had to place cherubims to guard the way to the tree of life so that man didn't eat from the tree of life and remain uh, forever in that sinful state. Um, so through that curse of death, we all must die. We all must uh, pass through this. And I know uh, in, in, uh, in Revelations 22, it says, Revelations 21, he's making all things new, but I just want to read uh, Revelations 22, 1 through 3. It says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse there. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And it's just amazing when you go from Genesis and then what John sees in Revelation, that now the cherubims have been relieved of their duty. They've been asked to stand down and the way to the tree of life is open and it's free and the curse has been removed. The curse of death, the curse of sin, that's all been removed. And just we picture um, death as a morbid thing and I know that I picture, I try to picture it this way, and I, I don't know if this is a good way to picture it, but all that died up until Christ, uh, up until the death and resurrection of Christ, pictured of a, as a bag. Um, if you died, you, like, I'll take three, three, in, three inferences um, in, in the New Testament, where Jairus' daughter, if death was a bag, um, was dead a few hours maybe and was part way into that bag and Christ pulled her out and then there was when Christ came up and they were on their way to the burial um, he stopped and that guy was boy was dead for maybe a day or a day and a half and he was a little further into the bag and Christ pulled him out and then there's Lazarus who had been dead for three, day, four days, and he was starting to stink, so he was all the way in. He was at the bottom of the bag, and Christ reached all the way in to the bottom of the bag, and he pulled him out. So the way I picture it is all who died before the resurrection of Christ are in the bag, and the only way they could come out was the same way that went in. But Christ changed all of that when Christ came and he died and and if we use that same picture he went into that bag 
But there was something different when Christ went into the bag. He didn't get resuscitated, so to speak. He didn't get pulled back out the way he went in. Christ punched a hole through the bottom of the bag. So the bag now has a huge hole in it. The bag has no power. The bag can't hold you. Christ came out the other side. And now, um, if we look at it in that way, as, as Christ has now destroyed the power of death, death can't hold anyone. It is now simply a gateway from life to life. And I, um, I know that he says, it says that he held, he, he brought captivity captive. The captivity, the captivity of, de of death is now the captive of Christ. And it says that he set the captives free. And then he gave gifts unto men. So that is our encouragement and, our, and that's what our confidence is in is that Christ has conquered death. Death now has no more power over any of us. Um, and I just, if we could look through, if we were able to, to tip that bag on its side and to look through the hole that Christ had blasted through, we could see the other side of it, what Christ has prepared for us. And this wouldn't hurt so much. Um, but I picture, I picture as it, as it was in Genesis, I picture it's the same. Um, God is doing the same again. And it's, Christ says that I, I'm going away and I'm going to prepare a place for you and then I'm going to return. And that's not verbatim for what it's written, but he is going to return when he has prepared that place. And I picture it the same way. And I don't think it's wrong to picture it that way, that when it is completed and he is going to, to uh, the new Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. And I just like to think that in this way, that when, when, the, time, when the time is completed, and all have been gathered, um, all have passed through this, and all have gathered, been gathered uh, safely to the Father. Um, he will give the command and Christ will return. But it won't be the same as the, fir as the first time. I just picture if he, was, if he was to write this, as it was in Genesis, that it, this happened, and it was in the morning in the evening of the first day. And then this happened, and it was the morning and the evening of the second day. And it would be something like, and all of, and, and, um, and it was, the building was completed, and all of his children were gathered to himself. And he took, and he spread his wings around them, and he brought them in safely. And this was the morning and the evening of the last day. And then God sent his son and they, and they called him Lord. And that's the day that we're looking forward to. And, and, and it's, it's hard in the, in the midst of all of this to, to look beyond this and past all of this hurt and this pain and this separation feeling that we have. But we have to remember that here we have no continuing city. We don't, we don't have a continuing city, but we seek one which is to come, not made with hands, whose builder and maker is God. And God is preparing that city, and when he is complete, he will gather all of his children to himself, and it will be the morning and the evening of the last day, and he will say, this is good. This is very, very good. So mom and dad, that's what we're looking forward to. And that simply is what Logan has done, and we all will do the same. 
is we will pass from one side of the bag to the other. One side of, we will pass, simply pass through death. We don't die. We pass through it. Mom and Dad, I love you. Father, I, I do come before you this morning um, on behalf of my mom and dad and their family and Logan's children, um, Slater and Timber and Archer. Father, your promises are throughout your word that you will comfort, that you will keep, and that you will protect your children. And Father, this morning we do ask that you would be um, the father to, to, to his children, that you will be their comfort, um, that you would encourage them, that you would be with mom and dad and all of Logan's siblings. And Father, that you would, you would be here today, that you would comfort and, and um, encourage us through your word. I do pray for those that are singing, and I pray for Steve as he is um, in obedience, is coming and, and you, um, allowing you to use him uh, to your honor and to your glory. So, Father, thank you for this, and may we always look to you uh, early. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Logan Eli Stenerson, 28, <clears throat> of Taylor, South Carolina, entered into eternal rest on August 30th, 2022. Logan was born on June 1st, 1994, in Peterborough, New Hampshire, to Eugene Skip and Karen St Wernke Stenerson, and moved to South Carolina as a baby, where he grew up surrounded by family and friends. He graduated from Blue Ridge High School in 2012 and has since been self-employed in the construction field. Logan was a hardworking dad who loved spending quality time with his kids. <clears throat> he enjoyed being outdoors, riding and working on his motorcycles, fast cars, and loved hot sauce, as all his family knows. And he was reliable and, and was always willing to lend a helping hand. His fun, lighthearted, caring personality will be greatly missed, but we know one day we will see him again on that bright eternal morning. <clears throat> he is survived by his children, sons, Slater and Archer, and daughter, Timber of Taylors, his parents, Eugene Skip and Karen Stenerson of Landrum, brothers, Leroy and Maria Stenerson of Traveler's Rest, Lars and Lyanne Stenerson of New Ipswich, New Hampshire, Levi and Jennifer Stenerson of Seaview, Washington, Lauren and Jody Stenerson of Taylor's, Lester and Elizabeth Stenerson of Ridgefield, Washington, Louis Stenerson of Wolf Lake, Minnesota, sisters Tana and Brian Rainey of Taylor's, Trisha Halishka of Monaga, Minnesota, Tiffany and Dwight Hanu of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, Tyra and Randon Aho of Greer, South Carolina, and Tanya and Michael Traffy of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. He also leaves behind a host of nieces and nephews, cousins, and many friends. Logan was preceded in death by a brother Lance, his grandparents, Aner and Angie Stenerson, and Harry and Evelyn Wernke, and a great friend and nephew, Jarrett Rainey. And good night, little Logan. Take your rest. We love you, and we will see you in the morning. Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, has revealed to us that heaven and earth shall pass away, that our own bodies shall rise again, and that we shall all appear before the judgment seat, we beseech thee, keep us by thy Holy Spirit in thy word, establish us in the true faith, Graciously defend us from sin and preserve us in all temptations and cares of this life, that we may ever watch and pray, and trusting fully in thy grace, await with joy the glorious coming of thy Son, and at last obtain eternal salvation through thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one true God, world without end. Amen. It is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter, in the 21st verse. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Amen. God, who is love, has in his wisdom called Logan into eternity. And though in our measure of things it seems untimely, Yet, as scripture says, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment, we can be certain that in God's economy, the timing is perfect. And so, the loved ones here must say goodbye to those who leave this life. And the heart that was filled with love is now filled with grief. For in this lifetime, love and grief are intermingled and joy and pain are closely twined. But we have to remember that we leave our loved ones and in a time like this it would seem in a way that is hard to understand. But this we know, that God is love. We know that God is all wise. We know that God is good. And so we are able to leave our loved ones in those hands. And for great assurance then, we can also remember that those hands in which we leave our loved ones are nail-pierced hands. As he was nailed to the cross for your sins and mine and for Logan's, we leave our loved ones in nail print hands. But in speaking of the nail prints, we have to say this, that it was not simply iron nails which held our Lord to the tree. For what are iron nails to Almighty God? No, but it was divine love for you and for me which bound him to the tree. For he beheld us in our lost and condemned state, 
as we already heard of the curse that came upon the earth and the separation that came to man from God in the garden because of sin. And God in love would not leave us in such a state. But as scripture says of our Lord, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sit down at the right hand of God on high. It was a joy for God to send his only innocent son to offer up his life and his blood for our sins so that which separated us from God is removed in Christ. And through the blood of his cross, we now have perfect union again with God and fellowship with him, that which was lost in the garden at the fall. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, we can be sure that we too will take our place in similar fashion, still and silent. And so as God sought out Adam on the day he fell and preached the gospel in the presence of Adam, so today we see the importance of that gospel message for our own hearts. And it was God who preached the gospel first when he spoke and said that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent and destroy his power. And there God spoke of Christ to come. And this message then is for each one of us who are gathered here as we too face judgment and eternity. That through the gospel, through the blood of the cross of Christ, we are able also to in time here receive the forgiveness of sins and peace with God and also go on to that eternal day where we can be in perfect union with God forever. And so God has granted us also the gospel message that goes forth as he preached in the garden and goes forth even today as written in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that what I, what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Amen. The simplicity of the gospel, then, that God has sent unto us, that which is able to deliver us from the bonds of death unto a glorious resurrection at the last day, is preached unto us yet, as Paul records here in Corinthians, declaring unto them the gospel, which he had already preached. And then he continued to preach the same gospel. There is no new gospel. There is no new way of salvation. Salvation is obtained only through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this he reaffirms here unto us, telling us that they had received that gospel and that gospel was able to make them stand. Stand in faith and stand before God and stand against sin and stand against judgment, for they were in Christ, he who went to death and to hell to deliver them from such judgment. And he says, by which also ye are saved. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is sufficient for salvation. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is sufficient to cleanse from all sin. And that is the gospel that is preached here yet today. It is a saving gospel. And he delivered this, that, that which he also had received, that Christ died for our sins. 
What a blessed matter that we can claim this for our own when we see our own sins, our own shortcomings, though we may fear the judgment of God. The testimony of Scripture is that Christ died for our sins. And if it is Christ who died for our sins, the very Son of the living God, we can be certain that the judgment of sin was meted out upon him and that he did not fail one iota in taking our sins from us, but he perfectly fulfilled that which was given him by God to do, to save his people from their sins. And so we have blessed comfort and consolation here that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, according to the record that God himself has given. This is not the message of man that Christ died for our sins is the divine word from God himself in heaven unto us and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. That hell and death that would have bound us forever, they are now destroyed in Christ. For as Christ descended into hell, it was for the purpose of breaking down its gates and tearing its bars asunder so that it can no longer hold you or me. But he was raised again victorious. And that scripture then was fulfilled, which is written in the Old Testament by God himself who says, O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. And so in Christ we have this confidence by the very scriptures themselves, by the word of God, that God has destroyed death, destroyed hell, and destroyed the grave for us, that it will no longer hold us eternally. But God looks upon us now. God looks upon his children. And those who have faith in him then have this unity with him that only he can perform in the heart by the new birth. And these ones then are they who in time are united with Christ. In this time by faith are united with he who is our life. So the gospel is important today for your soul and for mine. That today the gospel would belong to us. Today we would know and believe in this Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins, who was buried, and who was raised again the third day for us. As it is written, the very testimony of God himself. And at a time like this when death brings sudden departure, many thoughts and many emotions affect especially the close family, the mother and the dad, the brothers, the sisters, and those who loved him the most. But Jesus is ever watchful. God who keeps Israel never slumbers, never sleeps. As the songwriter says, his eye is on the sparrow. And scripture tells us this, for your heart and for mine, as Jesus said, the very hairs of our head are all numbered. Of your head and of mine, and that is how closely the Lord knew Logan. And it doesn't just say the hairs of his head were numbered, as though God knew the count of the hairs on our head, which would be true. But it's written this way, that the very hairs of our head. He points out the hairs of our head which we take no thought of. We don't think or will to make them grow. We cut our hair and sweep up the clippings and toss them out. And Jesus says, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Each one is numbered. That's how intimately 
God knows us. That's how closely he cares for us. And no harm can befall us except he permit. And all things are of his hand according to his will. And though we don't understand these things, we don't have all the answers, we know God is good. We know God is love. And we know that he sent his son not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So we have a savior today. We have one who cares for us. In all our troubles and tribulations, there is one who knows our hearts. As scripture says, he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. He has already trod this heavy path that the family must walk today. Jesus has already been here. For he was the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, Scripture says. He bore all of these things in his own body, in his own heart. He knows. And so we cast today all our cares upon him. And I pray that each one of us gathered here will in prayer turn to Heavenly Father for the sake of the family, that he would take that care, take that sharp pain, and in time of this grief and sorrow, Cause them to know the everlasting arms that are beneath them and the wings of grace that surround them and the, and the protection that God has over them and that he certainly will bear you through this time for he cares for his children. And such a care it is that he cared for us even to the point of the cross to die for our sins and to descend into death and hell to destroy them for us. We have this blessed consolation to hold to even as we journey below. So we keep the family in prayer and I pray that you will and also that we keep each other in prayer that as scripture says Teach us, O oh Lord, to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That God would so teach us that wisdom that is from heaven. And open our hearts to receive that engrafted word that is able to save the soul. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Shall we close in a word of thanksgiving? Gracious Father, you who have called us from darkness into your marvelous light, we ask that you in mercy look upon the family today with your favor, and knowing their hearts and their sorrows and their pain and griefs that you minister unto them from your own spirit, by your own word, that comfort which only you are able to give in such times. We ask that you keep them close, and that they would know your presence and that you are with them every moment of every day. We ask that you bless each one gathered here with your living word implanted in the heart, that you would look upon each one and grant that gift of repentance and faith, repentance toward you and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, that we too can have a blessed end and await that day when the eastern skies brighten and the eternal day dawns for us. Thank you for your great gifts of salvation. Amen.
On behalf of the Stenerson family, I welcome and invite all of you to attend the burial service at Mountain View Cemetery in Greer immediately following this service. Those who remain here are invited to enjoy food and fellowship in the fellowship hall where the family will join you upon their return.